top of the deck is making me better. But anyway, I was on the house and, and, and this was this lady and she was in one of those mobile cars. It was an older Caucasian lady. And she was, you could tell she was an elderly woman. I didn't know what age she was, but she was an elderly woman. And she said, young man, young man, can, can you come here? I said, yes, ma'am, sure. She said, well, um, can you reach up there and, and get that straw room for me? Because I don't like the new rooms that they made. I, I like that old type straw room. I said, ma'am, I know what you're talking about. Can you get that broom for me and, and tell me what the price is? And, and so I did. I reached up and I grabbed the broom and, and, and then I, I gave it to her. And she said, thank you, young man, so much. And I just want you to know something. Jesus love you. Pass it on. And I said, ma'am, thank you. I said, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you also. And she started talking to me, Mother Barbara. And she was talking about, you know, someone said that, a man said that to me so many years ago. And I made a promise to God that every time I come in contact with somebody, I'm going to tell them Jesus loved them. Pass it on. And I started getting chills in my body. Oh, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. And, and lo and behold, she started talking to me. She said, I'm so tired of all the stuff that's happening into the world and with all this racial wars and so forth. It don't matter what color we are because Jesus loves us all. And I said, ma'am, I'm so blessed to talk to you. I said, I just want to introduce myself to you. And I introduced myself and I said, I'm a pastor of both ministries. And that. Why? I told her that she wanted to talk to me even the more. You're a pastor. I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I want you to know something. I'm 91 years old. And I said, man, you said what? I said, let me clear my ears out. Did you say you, you 91 and you in this store by yourself? You drove here by 91 years old. I said, man, when I get your, I, come on, I want to reach your age and I want to have the same fervor, the same passion, the same strength that you had. She began to speak things and more things into my life. And I started getting full. That's why I rained today, y'all. I started getting full. And I said to her, I said, ma'am, you're an angel. Sipper, and I'm blessed today because I came in contact with you. She said, you know, that's what everybody tells me. That's what my children tell me. They tell me I must be an angel. I said, no, I'm no angel. I'm just a little old lady that loves Jesus. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah in here. And, and I just want to share that, that was, that's, a, that's my testimony. Because see, when, when, when the world is attacking everything that is right, and you can run into people that love God like you love them, and it don't matter the color of your skin, it don't matter how much money you got, because y'all, the, the truth be told, because some of y'all are being Walmart, and you know that person need help, and you will come on quickly go around the corner, because you don't want them to ask you to help them. Oh, y'all looking at me kind of funny. Some of y'all saw me in Walmart, and because you didn't want to talk to me, or even say, you hurried up around the corner to get away. Come on, somebody. I heard the Lord say to me, Sean, on the morning when I woke up, that the missing ingredient that's needed in the church today is simply love. I don't care how gifted you are. I don't care how charismatic you are. I don't care if you're prophesied. I don't care if you lay hands on the sick. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, Paul said, if you don't have love, you ain't got nothing. And we're basing ministry and everything on our gifts, our abilities, how charismatic we are. And it only takes one simple thing. Love. And I said to her before I never said Mother Barbara, I said to this lady, her name is Miss Mixon. Sister, and I said, God, thank God for Sister Mixon. Watch this now. I said, and then by this time, you know, a few of the Walmart workers started congregating at the end of the hour. You know why they was there. And all of a sudden I said, ma'am. I said, you have an amazing day. And I said, before I leave, can I do one thing? Can I hug you? And I reached over and I hugged that lady and she hugged me. And I said, I hope I run into you again. And may God continue to bless you. That's what it's all about. Because some of y'all don't realize there's people looking at you. They watching you. Well, you, you show them one thing when you in the church. But you're a whole different person when you out there in the community. And God ain't pleased with that. Somebody shout hallelujah again. That's my testimony. So now I want you to close your eyes. Hold that hand. Squeeze it tightly. Not too hard. Squeeze that person's hand. And I want you to forget about yourself. 
And I want you to say these simple words with me. Say, Lord, Lord. I thank you for this hand that I'm holding right now. God, I don't know what they need is right now. But you spoke to this house and you said it's going to rain. It's not only going to rain, but we are going to experience an outpour perpetually. So Lord, I want my neighbor to experience a miracle today. And because I'm a living, breathing, speaking spirit, I'm going to release something in the atmosphere that's going to form a supernatural cloud over my neighbor and you're going to pour down your love upon them. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for answering my prayer. Now, if you believe you are living, speaking, breathing, spirit, open up your mouth and release something 